So today we're talking focus peaking. No, that's a lie. We're talking false colors. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today, today I wanna to talk about false colors, how to use it and do we actually need it? For one, I use false colors all the time. It allow me to be consistent in my exposures on my videos. Now, do everybody need it? No, but here's the thing. Our LCD screens on the back of cameras don't always give you the most accurate exposure of your video. So what happens is when you film in, it might look good just you looking at it, but then you go back to your computer and realize that it's not as you'd seen it on the back of the screen and then you're having to make so much adjustments to do that now here's the thing not everybody needs to have false color but i think it's a very very valuable tool so here's the thing false colors is a tool that's on your external monitor that allows you to see your exposures in colors so every color has a different exposure values which are called ire your your exposure values are measured in ire values so at the moment for me i am correctly exposed and you can see from the monitor that the lightest the, the brightest part of my face is actually in the lighter gray now that is between 59 to 77 ire and that's where i like to be in terms of my brightest part of my face and the reason for that is i like to expose slightly brighter than the scene and and that's because when you add shadows you kind of introduce a little bit of noise so i would rather be able to bring the shadows down to keep the image as clean as possible so i tend to slightly overexpose my image if you look at the image on the automus ninja which i'm shooting at which is showing you the false color ire you can see this side of my face is like a a darker gray which is is great it's nice gray for shadows and then you have a nice transition to the greens and the gray and the orange and like i said the lighter part of my head is the brightest now if i was to switch the light off you will see that this part of my face is now in complete blue which is on the monitor if you look at the screen blue is like your black is a black that's where you would lose all your details and red anything from your yellows orange and red is where you would blow your highlights so you don't want to be doing that you want your shadows to be in that sort of that gray below the green unless you're going for more i don't know creative look then it there is no rules behind it but if you want to properly expose your image you want your shadows to be in the 25 to 43 percent um, ire range and then you want your brightest part of your face to be between 59 and 77 ire for me this works really really well for everybody it might be different but i think false color is one of the most incredible tools i've ever come across why because you can literally creatively light a scene just from the different colors in the scene now waveforms are great but you have to really understand how to read your waveform to really understand they, how they work they show if you're clipping highlights or if you're clipping the shadows they showed it in between but it's, it takes a lot more understanding to read a waveform whereas false colors the numbers are there for you to read and you just go by the numbers and voila bob's your uncle so i really hope that this was a valuable information to you guys out there who are trying to learn how to properly expose your video now as i said in the beginning do you need to have it no but it's such a good tool to help you understand how to properly expose your scene now for me i can never stop using this now i was introduced to it when i bought my shinobi I loved it. The only thing with a Shinobi actually doesn't show you the numbers, it just shows the colors on the side. Whereas the Ninja V actually shows you the actual IRE values instead of just the colors. But I'm not saying that this is the 100% way to correctly expose for a scene, but for me, this is what's been working. And it means that all my videos going forward are now consistent. The exposures are correct, unless I'm going for a more creative vibe where I want, you know, more contrasted image, then that's a whole different story. But the main reason for me to get into false colors is that 
before when I was filming my videos in the same settings, I find that sometimes the videos were inconsistent in exposure and that's because it looked okay on the back of my camera. Now, it's not a big deal. You don't have to have it. You know, you don't have to get an Atomos Ninja. There are other monitors that offers the same deal. I just went for the Atomos brand because when I was doing my research, it was the best choice for me at the time. You know, it was easy to use and I understood it better than the others. The colors are more accurate than most monitors. Um, and this is why I went for it. You can color collaborate it and you can't do that to all monitors. And, and that's, you know, some of the great benefits of having the Atomos Ninja. False colors is not for everyone, but if you want the best out of your camera, if you want to learn how to properly expose your image, it's one of the best tools to have trust me i now force color all my exposures now because it's such a good tool so until the next one thanks for visiting me take care guys i'm out <laughs>